There's a whole world beyond the crater, filled with ideas and possibilities. We could have escaped, seen it all for ourselves, tested it, prodded at it, made it squirm. Wait, what? <laughs> Quietly for- what? I can bring the- Um... Hmm... I can bring the Mojave, but I'm not evil. I'm not taking test subjects against their will. I could- I could- I could bring roadkill! I- Hmm... I- Okay, I can bring the Mojave, this world, to you. You'll be safe, and you'll still be able to experiment. For you? And for science? I have a strange sensation that I would like that. How odd. Very well, partner. The think tank is at your service as long as you do not destroy us. You're the only one that would need to be destroyed. Okay. That's it? That it? Nothing else? That was anticlimactic as hell. I thought he would fight Stop. me or something. So as Mobius is twisted as he looked in person? Can't believe you entered the Forbidden Zone and lived. None of us can. Okay. Until our next schedule. Yeah. Uh, Dala? Hi. The teddy bear lobotomite returns. My teddy bear. How can I assist in relieving your curiosity? Uh, okay. Bye. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, where'd the other assholes go? They went away over here. Yeah, it's great. Turn, turn, run, your bullshit! The lobotomite who saved us! Hello! Oh, okay, you don't have anything to say. Alright. Klein, do you- oh wait, who are, who are you? Doctor Eight. Uh, uh you're, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. Hmm, okay. I want to ask questions. Uh, Donnie, uh, thing to help me pass the time? <laughs> uh, you know, son, ejaculate. Yeah! Alright, see you later. <laughs> Tales of Chivalry! Cool. Klein, you better watch yourself before I have to come back and kick your ass. Oh, God, what the fuck was that? Thank you for what you have done. The helping, that is. We like that. I feel an odd emotion. Platitude? Attitude? No, wait. Gratitude, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, bye. a most goodbye. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you better be careful. I will I will fucking come back here and police you. Po I will yeah, I will definitely police you guys if I need to. Dala, I will definitely be back for you uh sometime. All right. So, uh I don't know what I have to do now. Like I think I just need to leave. Right? Alright, <clears throat> so, uh, I need to restart my recording, and, uh, I'll be RB. As it had been in the years before the Great War, Big Mountain, the Big Empty, became home to one of the brightest minds of the 23rd century. The courier watched over the Big Empty for years to come, caring for it and keeping its discoveries safe until they were needed to help others. Which had always been Big Mountain's purpose. Past the laboratories and science, it had always been intended as a place to build the future of all mankind. The SYNC Central Intelligence Unit was impressed by the amount of exploration the courier had undertaken. Facilities believed lost, destroyed, or ones that had simply gotten up and walked to new locations had been rediscovered by its intrepid new master. 
Internally, the artificial personality debated as to whether it preferred the old management to the new, and concluded that the courier's thorough approach to research and investigation was admirable and worthy of its respect. The Forbidden Zone continued to be, true to its name, forbidden. No more robo-scorpions were sighted in its canyons. Big Mountain became even emptier, devoid of Dr. Mobius's proclamations forecasting the destruction of anything that dared possess sentience. Still, it is said he lived on in the equations inscribed on the floor and walls of the Forbidden Zone Dome. A cobweb tracery of symbols that told of a thousand brilliant thoughts, now lost to time. The sink atop the dome bustled with the voices of a small town, constantly chirping, arguing, and snarling at each other. Still, this all happened productively in the interests of its new owner. The SYNC Central Intelligence Unit discovered, despite its inversion code, it was comforted by the sense of community the other personalities gave it. The Biological Research Station, obsessed with seeding everything in sight, requested a transfer to the X-22 Botanical Garden. So that it might, in its own words, sensually fertilize the garden's smooth contours. The garden sent back a polite refusal, saying it had prior commitments with a vault it had helped infect before the war. The book shoot continued to devour all seditious materials until it nearly choked on a paperclip. It adamantly maintained it was a Chinese paperclip, and the whole thing had been an elaborately orchestrated assassination attempt. Whatever the reason, it slowed down for a while, carefully appraising each document and clipboard that came to it. The light switches continued to bicker and flicker. This persisted until the day someone dropped a flashlight in the sink, and the two of them united in their hatred of the showboat. One of them eventually transferred to the Lightwave Dynamics plant and began a long, unrequited affair with one of the holograms. The sink continued to ruthlessly scrub any particulate matter that came near it. Eventually, it gained access to the magnetohydraulics plant and nearly flooded all the big empty in an attempt to scrub the crater clean. Once it learned of the innovative toxins plant, however, it gained new purpose. It sought to develop antitoxins to flush into its drains and counteract the poisons bleeding into the soil. The toaster continued its psychotic spree, reducing all appliances in range to scrap electronics and spare parts. After one of its more psychotic episodes, however, the other sink personalities decided enough was enough and dumped the toaster in a bathtub. Sparking and hissing, the toaster swore its enemies would rue the day when they had bread and no way to toast it. Muggy did his best to collect coffee cups, although in his quest, he accidentally trapped himself in Higgs Village. It might have been the end for poor Muggy. Except he found it peaceful there, tidying up the kitchens of the think tank professors back when they had been flesh and bone. Well, except for Dr. O, who was an asshole for having created Muggy in the first place. Muggy left O's house deliberately dirty, punishing the dishes and cups that lived there in blind revenge for serving Dr. O. Blind Owl Jefferson, with sounds the courier brought him, created a symphonic counter-frequency that saved Big Mountain from Sonic Invasion in 2910. If you didn't hear about it, good. It was rumored by the other personalities that he had a brief fling with the light switches. 
although he forgot their names once too often and was soon left in the dark as punishment. Autodoc, always gentle and methodical, kept sewing up the courier in all the right places when the skin split open from repeated wear and tear. The Autodoc was just glad to have purpose again. It heard its simpler brothers and sisters who got shipped to the Sierra Madre were bored out of their skulls in that toxic dead city. In time, the Autodoc found a way to deactivate the Y-17 trauma harnesses, releasing the corpses they had held prisoner for almost 200 years. As the courier ran through the X-8 facility multiple times, the computers analyzed the test subject's movements. Rather than performing a superficial observation, they realized the subject barely knew what communism was, or even what a high school was. This confused them for a time, until the facility finally realized that its research had succeeded. So it let its cyber dogs out into the wastes to help protect small communities from physical aggression rather than communist propaganda. The infiltration program in X-13 felt spent, having repeatedly upgraded the stealth suit until it could upgrade it no more. It felt warm, fulfilled, and a bit sluggish. It realized not long after the stealth suit had left it without so much as a note on the nightstand. So the infiltration program sent out robo-brains into the wastes, looking for its wayward technology. It eventually found Repcon HQ and set up a new research center, testing and murdering fiends who kept breaking into the facility. The courier, organs intact, continued onwards, a little less heavy of step, but with all the organs in the right places, as they should be. After all, brains can develop a life of their own when left to their own thoughts, and the courier's brain was more clever than most. Dr. Klein and the think tank remained alive, unaware of the world outside. They looped through their daily routine, none the wiser about the world beyond, although perhaps wiser was the wrong word. The world outside belonged to the courier, and if anyone would shape it, well, the courier had already called dibs. There is an expression in the wasteland, old world blues. It refers to those so obsessed with the past they can't see the present much less the future, for what it is. They stare into the what was, eyes like pilot lights, guttering and spent, as the realities of their world continue on around them. Science is a long, steady progression into the future. What may seem a sudden event often isn't felt for years, even centuries to come. In the times following the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, however, Old World Blues took on a new meaning. Where once it was viewed as a form of sadness, nostalgia, it became an expression describing the potential for the future. It can be easy to see science as evil, technology unchecked as the source of all ills, all misfortunes. With the courier at the helm, Science became a beacon for the future. There was old world blues, and new world hope, and hope ruled the day at Big Mountain. We could say more, but the stories in the Big Empty speak for themselves. Now armed with the transportal ponder, the courier could return to the dome at any time and crack open the secrets of the Big Empty one by one. The sink sat vigilant waiting for its master to return.
shoes covered in Mojave dust. Only one road yet remained, and it was one the courier had to walk alone. One road? Two! There are two DLCs left, game! Don't be ridiculous. Oh no, I lost the brainless perk! Oh no! Alright, yeah, big brain, uh... Cannot be crippled, but you're only 10% more resistant to addiction now. Well, that's too bad. Uh, damage threshold has improved. Uh, you have acquired the Big Mountain Trans Portal Ponder. Okay, uh... Okay, that just brings me back here and... and lets me leave and whatnot. How exciting! Okay, Sink, what's up? You got anything Might to say? I be safe in the assumption that matters with the think tank have been satisfactorily concluded vis-a-vis -vis your residence in this domicile. Uh, you know what? Mr. Sink, Central Intelligence Unit, you truly are a basilite on. Very good, sir. You are worthy of so much respect. Right. Don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> Soon, beautiful one. Soon I will rule, and your eyes will have their dumbness setting turn to darkest. No, no, not darkest. So you beat the big brains at their own game. Guess you'll be putting your walking shoes on again, hitting that old lonesome road. Yeah, I definitely will be walking that lonely street, man. On the, you know that the. The Broken Dream Boulevard, you know? I'll talk Catch to you later. later Gator. Yeah, sure. Alright, where the fuck is Muggy? I need to talk to Muggy. Unless he's not in here, I don't know. Alright, well, I guess the light switch it is. You outbrained the big brains? That is so... hot. I agree! Uh, turn the lights on, yo. You bet I can. I bet that's more than that other tramp can do, huh? Oh, I bet. Ah, <clears throat> yeah, let's just turn them on. Red's nice, I guess. Hey, Toaster, what's up? With the brains dealt with, soon we can spread our rule across the Mojave. All will eat burned toast in despair. Oh, well, I, uh, hope you grow some legs so you can do that, Toaster. Yes! Flee before my terrible power! Oh, I'm fle I'm, f I'm fleeing all right. Oh, the power! Uh. All right, though, we're the... Can I talk to you? I trust matters regarding your brain were resolved to your satisfaction. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't need well, anything. Well, I'll be right here if you change your mind. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, oh yeah, this guy. Greetings, citizen. Ready to receive seditious materials. Uh, well, yeah, here are some seditious materials for you to process. No paper clips, I swear. Fantastic, citizen! Just input your quantity of seditious material on my interface, and in no time at all, I'll have you a beautiful, clean book. Won't that keep you happy and docile, citizen? Absolutely. Pencils! I didn't know I had any. All right. Uh, so who's left? Muggy! Please, 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 tell me you stomped Dr. O's brain into a fine paste. Did he squeal? Did he beg? God, I hope he begged. Who's the flatware bitch now, oh? Mmm, yeah, it'd be a real shame if, uh... Sure. Hmm. Nobody wants to hang out with Muggy. I get it. So long, pal. Yeah, I guess he really hates Dr. O. Zero Slash. It'd be a real shame if someone were to go to his house and... Make a mess of all his dishes and plates. That'd be a real fucking shame. You're back, and the brains didn't lobotomize you. Well, not any worse, at least. Hooray! Hmm, okay. Uh, do I have empty bottles? Here, fill them. You're going to need to find yourself some empties mm. first before I can fill them for you. Any empty bottle will do. It's just not too dirty, okay? Okay, adios. Come back any time you want to drink. Or to get... Clean. Okay. Muggy? Yeah, Muggy's alright. Not too seedy. But hey, nobody's perfect. I'm perfect. Mmm, 
You took care of them brains pretty good, baby. Nice. Okay, bye. Hurry back with that seed now, baby. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, I wanted my brain back because I mean, well, I mean, it's my fucking brain. But another, uh, another one of the something to think about. I mean, what would stop someone from coming here and like destroying it? Like, what if some raider came, saw, oh look, a brain in a jar, and starts beating it with a fucking crowbar or something? That, like, that's good. What happens if they get to it and destroy? Dead. That's what. I don't want that. Dead is bad, and I can't defend my brain if I if I don't have a gun protecting it. So yeah, there's that. And I kept the think tank alive because I mean science is good. I'll police the shit out of them, but science is good, and uh, we need science. So uh, huh? I guess uh, I think that's everything. I think. Did I talk? There's no one else in there. What am I doing? Uh, so that's everything. And uh, what is that? Oh, that's the dome right there. Okay. Alright. <clears throat> so, let's go back to the wasteland. Oh, I can't... Oh, that's right. Can't use it inside. Dumb game. It's ridiculous. Alright, guys. So, uh, that is enough for now. Um, got all my shit stowed away. I'm now at 117 pounds of glorious, glorious things. And, uh, next time we get on... Uh, we'll be doing that awful abomination, dead money, and uh, we're gonna see me get frustrated and angry and want to just blow up the world with the evil toaster. Um, I mean, if, if, if things go very awful, I may just have to get that toaster and uh, give him his wildest dreams. But, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, dead money, don't like it, but uh, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get there. We'll slowly crawl through the barbed wire of bullshit with glass shards in our face and walking on crushed bullshit. That's, that's why I just have an infuriation with that goddamn DLC. <laughs> so, um, see you guys next time. Uh, oh!